Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, how's it going? How, how are you all doing? You doing well? I, I hope so. Uh, I might sound a little groggy. I don't know. I, I can't hear myself right now. But the reason for that is full transparency. Uh, I just woke up. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, you know, any any longtime viewers would be like, oh god, here we go, the curse sleep schedule again. Uh, so full transparency, so I can shame myself into fixing this, it is currently almost 3.30 in the morning. Um, I fell asleep sometime around 9. <laughs> and this is where we are, this is how I'm living my life now, I guess. Uh, I went ahead and just selected this point to resume, um, because we've already done both of these branches. I know, like, I, I need to come here for the key at some point, but I wanna do, I think I wanna do the key stuff last. Just because, like, that feels important. I don't know, like, y you get what I mean? Like, it, all these other routes, it feels like you could just go through. But this, there's one that's specific to these, like, little keys and stuff, you know? So. We'll, we'll save that one for last. I want to try and do it on my own, but I'm not opposed to looking something up, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'll play that by ear when we get there. But we still have this path to go down here, which is what we're about to do. Um, and then we're gonna try going down here and seeing, seeing where this leads. I wonder if there's gonna be another like key set as well, or if it's just gonna be to get to this branch here. Um, and I guess at some point I wanna see this scene as well. But like that's that's kind of low priority. Probably after we're done with these branches here, we'll go knock that out real quick, and then we'll do the keys. It's kind of my current thought process for everyone. But anyway, we're 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 right here. We're about to go down to this last. Row. I don't remember what number it was. Uh, thankfully, the game grays out the choices I've already done. So, um, I believe what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna skip. Uh, excuse me. I, I believe we're going to skip. Well, we really don't have a choice now. Look, I. It, we can't let his sacrifice go to waste. Okay, I guess it puts me right before the, yeah, yeah, because I think I need to go through the eight door, if I remember right. Because I think the seven door was the one I went through, well, the three door was the one I went through last time, but the first time. I think I went through the seven right. door. <sighs> like you even mean that. You Look, I'm just gonna, no. I'm just gonna blast through this real quick. Huh? Well, I thought there was like a little skip button down here, but now it just says name? stop, and that's not what I'm looking for at all. What? So we're just, we're just going straight to the decision. We've already all seen right. all this. Junpei. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Door. No, I went through door eight last time. I want to go through door seven. I. I think. I'm gonna go with door seven. All right. It was a little. It was a little quiet. I boosted the audio a little bit. So if it just got randomly louder, uh, that's because. Um, so look, look. I'll just. I'll just be honest, right? The. Uh, the volume is tied to the volume I hear as well, right? So if I blast this shit up to insanity levels. It's gonna be very loud for you all as well. Um, I fall asleep with my headphones on a lot. It's a very common thing I do, and they have this little—they have this little lever on them that I can adjust the volume on. And so sometimes my head will roll; it'll really make it very quiet or very loud, um, and wake me up. So that's what happened, and I hadn't noticed it. It only gotten a little bit quieter than normal. It's like this isn't normal. So there you go. There you go. It's just look. My life's a mess, all right? Like, no one no one is arguing this, I realize, but... Okay, seven it is. Yeah. All right, then. That means June's gotta go through eight. See you, June. What? Why? What? Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If the six of us are gonna keep going without leaving anyone behind, there are only three ways we can do it. Plan A. If three, five, and eight go through seven, and four, six, and seven go through eight. Plan B. Four, five, and seven go through seven, and three, six, and eight go through eight. Plan C. Or three, six, and seven go through seven, and four, five, and eight get eight. There are no other combinations. In other words, three and four and seven and eight can never go through the same doors. You get it now? As Santa finished, June looked over at Junpei, tears welling up at the clor at the at the corners at the corner of her eyes. Oh no! You're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time. We don't know if it's going to be long. It probably will be, but. Junpei felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. But he knew if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. 
He looked at Jun. He was scared to lose her, but swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on. You're making it sound like we're never gonna see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, we don't know. She didn't sound very hopeful. It was Seven that interjected. I'm sure they're gonna connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? Because otherwise we couldn't get through the Nine door. If they don't, then neither team can get through door Nine. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not going to end this game until we get through the nine door. June said nothing. Mm. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them and with what and with what reassurance he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to see each other again. I promise. I just want to take a step back real quick. I absolutely hate how June's got like her hair wrapped up in this like scarf thing here. That would drive me insane. I have long hair as well, and this would drive me nuts. Like if you turn your head a bit, your hair's gonna like tug here, you know? If you like quickly look to the left or right or something, you know, it's gonna like tug against all the shit. That would absolutely drive me crazy. One million percent. <laughs> June bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yes. Promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice shattered the moment. <laughs> Classic. <sighs> you guys are done, right? <laughs> he stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. All right, we're ready to go then. Dude, Santa gets shit done. All right, like he's he's kind of no nonsense and I respect that. He's like, look, this is the situation. This is how it is. Fucking deal with it, losers. Let's move. I hate your dumb ass name though. As at Santa's command, the group split and headed for their respective doors. Clover 7 and Junpei walked towards door 7. Santa, Lotus, and June headed for door 8. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. 7 took a deep breath. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. So it's interesting, if as long as you don't go through door three, you always go with Clover. Huh. It's open. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Seven and Clover leapt through the door. Let's do this! Hurry! The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. The detonators and the bracelets had been activated. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. Bro, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, this is a... Bye, June! You know, okay. He looked to his right, toward door eight. June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met. They nodded. June. Jumpy. Their farewell took almost one and a half seconds. What the hell are you doing, Junpei? <laughs> Yeah, honestly, Seven is uh, onto something here. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, psycho? <laughs> I forgot about the little blur there. <laughs> then someone took hold of Junpei's arms and hauled him bodily through the door. Yeah, what if you had missed the door? You would have fucked everything over for this. He heard the sound of the numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold, electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left! No time to waste, guys! Let's get moving! Seven lead led the way down the hallway. Junpei and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. Look! The door on the left! I can see the dead! 
There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel on the dead. Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> Bro, you're, you're gonna be all right. His smile seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but... Whew, you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head to his neck. Or from his head and his neck, not from his head to his neck. <laughs> I guess I was thinking he wiped his hand from his head to his neck to get the sweat off. <laughs> Gotta get all this sweat off my face, dude. Put that on my neck. <laughs> Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. Wow, what the fuck is wrong with you? Jesus, Seven's a great guy. Fuck off, you old brat. What? What the hell did you just say? Say it again! I dare you! You have no... You little... You wanna die? <laughs> I'd like to see you try. You fucking brat. All right, let's go! Okay, look. <laughs> Seven, you gotta be the bigger man here. I'm not gonna lie. Like, this is ridiculous. What, you were obviously like 10 times her size. You could probably pick her up and just throw her straight up and through the fucking roof like a damn cartoon. Like, we don't, you don't need to prove anything here. Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for this. It's not going to do us any good. Hmm. Hmm. What the fuck's wrong with you, Clover? What did Seven do to you? Like, what is... Uh, Junpei sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a minute, all right? I'm gonna go see if there are any other doors. You're gonna leave them alone after that spat? You are insane, my guy. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for a conversation anyway. No, no, no. What you do here is you go, hey, one of you two, go look for other doors in this area. While I and, you know, look in this area. And you split everyone up, right? To cool off for a moment. You don't leave the two people who are just arguing door. alone. Ah, and of course it's shut tight. There's a short hallway on the left here. And an iron wall. I doubt I can get through it. At last, he gave up and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. This door's the only option we've got, right? Yeah, looks like it. Hey, something's written on the door. What? Where? On that <laughs> iron plate. Where? What iron plate? It says operating room. Oh, God. If this thing's telling the truth, there could be body parts inside here. <laughs> okay, look. It sounds ridiculous, but... But... I have heard, and I don't know how much truth there is. I don't know if this was just... You know, a, a good friend of mine fucking with me, or what... But I have heard, I had, I had an acquaintance at one point who worked as a janitor in a hospital. And he told me that cleaning up after the, op cleaning up in the operating rooms after surgery, it was very common for there to just be bits of bodies left. Like just bits of internal, you know, bits of internal organs or bits of like, you know, just whatever from inside a body. Um... I kind of always assumed it wasn't real, but maybe it was real and seven could be correct. What if there's a bit of gallbladder on the floor or something? Now, do I think they're going to be like live arms and legs in here? No, I don't think that. In all honesty, I probably don't think they're going to be any body parts at all in here. Uh, unless they're one of the nine people in this game or eight now, I guess. But who knows? Who knows? Well, this is probably not going to be pleasant. Any anyone anyone a anyone a surgeon who watches me? If you are, why? You are way too smart to be here. Like, way you please go keep saving lives. Do more important things. Uh, can anyone corroborate this? I'm very curious now. I've always assumed it wasn't real, but now I'm like, but what if it is? 
What if they do just kind of, I really love the idea that like a surgeon's, you know, doing whatever they are, you know, they're, 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 they're performing their operation, their hands deep in your guts, right? And they're just throwing shit out like, I ah, don't need that, don't need that. And they just throw it on the floor. That's hilarious to me. Something about it made Junpei feel nervous. It, moving on from that. Well, there's no point to standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. Uh, what's wrong? No, it, it's nothing. A chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Let's just go. Quickly, he gathered what courage she could and took the first step into the room. Seven followed, with Clover right behind him. Huh? Part of the room just past the door was obscured by a screen. What the hell is this? Why don't we take a look? Hey, Clover! Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Ah! Uh-huh. Her scream nearly blew out Junpei's eardrums. <laughs> Clover! He and Seven ran toward Clover to see what had frightened her. Hey, what's wrong? They rounded the screen, and the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. What the hell is this? <laughs> These stupid-ass mannequins. Is... is this a corpse? Oh, that's clearly a mannequin. Look at the segments here. This is obviously a mannequin. It was something that looked kind of like a human, lying across some sort of bed. No, not a bed. An operating table. The table sat on a rusty steel lift, and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down on it from the ceiling. We should probably take a closer look. Yeah. Slowly, they approached. <laughs> As they got closer to the body, it became clear that it wasn't a body at all. This is... What the hell? That's just a huge doll or something. A d doll? Clover did not look terribly comforted. Slowly, she approached the operating table and looked as intently as possible, from as far away as possible, at the thing. <sighs> Junpei could see her relax. You're right. It's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh of relief and wiped a few drops of sweat from her forehead. Seven smirked. <laughs> Well, I guess it would have been weird if you actually had any balls. <laughs> oh my god, bruh. Bruh, just drop it, alright? Just be the bigger man, okay? Like, like, come on. We don't need to do this. Shut it. Don't you start with me, fatty. Oh, <laughs> what's this? You want a piece of me, short stuff? What the fuck is happening? Yeah, bring it on, you whale! Hey, guys, not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. Hmm. <sighs> <sighs> Jeez. Anyway, it looks like he's got something the two of you could stand to have a little more of. <laughs> what? So what, the, what, the heart? What do you mean? I'm talking about a heart. <laughs> huh? uh, oh, this? You mean on his chest? Yeah. It was set a little higher than normal for a human body, but from the shape of the organ, there could be no doubt that it was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. You think maybe it's, like, a medical mannequin or something? I mean, that would make a lot of sense in an operating room. That would make a ton of sense. Or maybe it's got more personal uses. Jesus Christ, dude. Seven's grin was more than a little perverted. <laughs> Clover glared at him. Anyway, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Sure thing. I hate this. I hate this room so much. We'll seek a way out action. All right. So what are we working with here? Operating room. There was another door we could go through as well. Let's check out this place first. You know, this might as well start with the mannequin. Hey, I wonder what this thing is. It says KG on the display. You think maybe it's a scale? Yeah, that would check out. Huh? There's some sort of lid on this thing. 
Why don't you try opening it? Can't. There's no handle. Can't get under it with my nails, either. Fair enough. There's something that looks like it could be a scale next to the operating table. That's something that looks like a lid on the front of it. These dolls are really kind of creepy, you know? Hey, it says something here. John? You think that's this doll's name? Maybe? This thing is creepy. I wonder why it's on the bed. The creepy medical mannequin is lying on the bed. Apparently his name is John. An operating table. Do you think old operating tables look like this? I have no idea. It's an old operating table. The medical mannequin is lying on it. D there's no way they use like a freaking scissor lift in old operating tables. I don't believe that for a moment. Oh, good God. Um, well, I mean, like, clearly this is what they want me to look at. The kosher forceps. Let's search them. Are those scissors? They look kind of funny. No, that's probably a pair of kosher forceps. Surgeons use them during operations. They can hold blood vessels shut and keep tissue out of the way. We can use it to pull stuff out of small holes or something like that. Bunch of surgical tools. Yeah, can I pick up any of the other ones? Nope, just the kosher forceps. Kosher? Kosher? I don't know. Remove the sh- Oh my fucking god. Jesus Christ. Alright, not quite what I was expecting. There's some kind of device attached to the bed. It says KG on the panel. Is this a scale? Another medical mannequin? From the looks of it, this one's a chick. She has a name too. Lucy. Poor thing. Looks like Miss Lucy has on, only has a head and a left arm. Maybe we're supposed to gather all her parts? Uh, maybe, that seems reasonable. Lucy's head and left arm are sitting on the bed. Maybe something will happen if we gather all of her body parts. Oh, we cover her back up. We don't need to just see Lucy sitting there. That'd be weird. It's this thing. It's got short iron legs. Maybe it's a heater? There's nothing inside it. Oh, well, fair enough, nothing in there. Oh, oh, fake chest, let's go! Ew, that's gross! This is the chest. It's a woman's chest. The heart's gone, but it's pretty hot. Jesus Christ, dude, really? If that kind of thing turns you on, Seven, you're a real creepo. Jesus fucking Christ, the chest of a medical mannequin. There's a hole on the left side of the chest for the heart. Look, can we just go ahead and put that where it needs to go so I don't have to hold this damn thing? This bed doesn't look very comfortable. Lucy's head and left arm are sitting on the bed. Maybe something will happen if we gather all of her body parts. Okay, now I guess I need to gather them all and then do assembly. There's a lot of different kinds of medication. It's hard to tell them apart. Maybe you're supposed to heat something like that gauze to kill the bacteria? There's a boiling thingy over there. There's nothing on the lid or in the drawers. Oh, we could, we can leave. Go to the preparation room. It's locked. We can probably find the key if we just look some more. Let's look somewhere else. Fair enough. What about back here? Also locked. It looks like it's locked. I guess we're gonna need a key for this one. Okay, well, everything we need to do is in this room right now. Got it. Well, I mean, like, again, it's like a cartoon. You can tell which one you need to click on because it's, it's, like, not in the background. A little scalpel action. A scalpel that's not rusty. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? You think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, I do. Oh, God, am I gonna have to perform surgery on these damn things? What the fuck? Medical mannequin with its guts showing. Ew! Gross! Hey, Junpei. There's a slit in this thing's chest. Yeah, sure is. There's something in there. Maybe we can get it out. Damn it. Stinking thing won't budge. It's stuck. Well, I guess you can't use force on this one then. 
We need something small that can fit into that little hole. Like a scalpel? An internal organ, specifically a lung. You can see this thing's internal organs. If it's something that can fit into those cracks, maybe we could take out some of the internal organs. Okay, maybe not the, maybe the forceps. Yep. Fake organ. So we took the organ thingy out of the chest thingy. It's a lung, not an organ thingy. Huh? This part here on the back, it's all rubbery. You're right. So, it's fake organ, of course it'd be... Wait, what's Seven grabbing it for? Hey, it feels like there's something in here. You think we can cut through the rubber part? Okay, we'll do a little combine action. Let's try cutting this organ with a scalpel. Got an organ key, of course. The organ key. Let's search it. There's a key in this organ. Found a key in an internal organ. <laughs> it's fucking weird, not gonna lie. All right, organ key. Uh, I don't know, are you for this room? Yay, let's go. Awesome, it unlocked. Oh my God, okay, there's a, there's a few things in here, huh? Hey, Junpei, you think there are any slugs on this ship? Huh? Well, if there are, I was thinking we could put salt on them. She, what the fuck is wrong with you? Holy hell, you psycho. What's she pointing at? A labeled states NAC, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's technically salt, but it's not like table salt, you know? It, it's different. Salt, huh? Do you think Seven will shrivel up if we put it on him? Hey, you say something? Okay, no, I thought that was a different connotation for the hay there. There's a bottle of salt on the shelf. The label says NACL. Junpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The label says FE. FE stands for iron, right? And she's not wrong. It's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. It says FE on the bottle. Okay, we can't look at the other sides of those shelves. Hmm? Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? It says NH3? Well, that of course stinks. It's ammonia. Yeah, that'll do it. There's a bottle of ammonia on the shelves. Oh, good stuff. Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says C2H5OH, right? It's ethanol. That's right. It's also known as ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is made of. So, you're gonna drink it? <laughs> nah, I won't. I might say that's what it is on the label, but there could be anything in there. <laughs> you are not, you are not gonna tell me Seven's out here drinking just raw uh, ethanol. <laughs> on a normal basis, like that's okay. I do not believe that for a moment. <laughs> oh man. Nah, I'm not gonna drink that ethanol just because that's what it says on the label. It, it could be anything in there. It could be whiskey in there. That'd be weird, man. Don't want that one bit. Oh God, carbon dioxide, ammonia, ethanol. Okay. Oh God, there's a note on the top of the table. Iron one, salt two, water three. Carbon dioxide equals question mark, ammonia equals question mark, ethanol equals question mark. What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box? Okay, so iron is one, salt is two, water is three. Um. Okay, water is H2O, salt is NaCl, and iron is Fe. I don't, I don't know, hold on. Oh, but, oh, I didn't think I could pick that up. I thought I would just look at it. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring out, pouring some out into the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright blue. Do you think it's alien blood? <sighs> Where the hell did that come from? Then what do you think it is, Seven? I don't know, some sort of special bath soap? Ugh, what a boring guess. 
Okay, so we got a blue liquid and a red liquid. This one's blood, clearly. <laughs> Hot blood, by the way. Looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring out some into the cap? Can't see a reason why not. What's that? It's bright red. Do you think it's blood? No blood's thicker than that. Then what is it? Beats me. Blood is also not bright red forever. <laughs> you can't just like take if you took so if you took some blood out of a human being and just left it in a bottle for God knows how long, it's not gonna stay red. It's gonna it's gonna deoxidize, right? Right? I know I know things, maybe. <laughs> what what's this? It's like a can with a spray nozzle. It says CO2. So it's a can filled with carbon dioxide. Weird thing to have. Hey, Junpei! There's dehydrogen monoxide on the shelf. Or dihydrogen monoxide. Why don't you just say water? The water, carbon dioxide, ethanol, ammonia. Water is one. Iron was two. Iron was up here, right? Singular table. I wonder, did people make some medicine on this thing? It was iron one, salt two. Wait, was iron on the bottom or top? Salt's on the bottom, okay. Salt is made up of one sodium atom and one chloride atom. Sorry, I didn't realize we were gonna get more information here. Or more, more, you know. God, no, I wanna, I wanna look at this. So, iron is top left, salt is bottom left. Water is top right. No, water, water is bottom right. No, water's top right. No, I was right. I was right. Water's top right, so therefore ammonia... No, carbon dioxide would be four. Bottom right. Right? So it's top bottom. So it's four, five, six. It's Is it literally just listed as the... Four, five, six? Box is locked. It looks like you have to enter a passcode on the keypad to open it. I can only enter three numbers. E is for enter and C is for clear. Once you have put the number, press E. If you mess up, press C. Let's give it a shot. Uh, I have no idea. I have nothing to hint at this yet. Hold on. What do I do with these liquids? There's a rectangular table in the center of the room. Okay, now. There's a bunch of bottles of salt on the shelf. Salt is made up of one sodium atom and one chloride atom. Iron is Fe. It's a molecule with only one atom. There's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. Iron is Fe. Even with only one atom, it's still a molecule. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe it's counting the number of atoms, right? Iron is one, salt is two molecules. Water has three, H2O, so carbon dioxide would be two, right? No, carbon dioxide would be three, CO2. Enter carbon dioxide on the shelf. The label is CO2, yeah. So carbon dioxide is three. Ammonia is four, and ethanol is seven, eight, nine. The so three, four, nine. Is that the code? Is it just three, four, nine? I don't know, let's try it. Let's see, let's see, what, let's see what happens. Three, four, nine. Just that easy. It's just that easy, honestly. A little fake heart, don't mind if I do. A heart? This thing is super creepy. This ain't good for the heart. What? <laughs> what weird, okay. Fake right arm. It's the right arm of the body. It's kind of creepy. Can I go ahead and combine this with the chest? No, okay, I guess I need to do that once it's assembled. Okay. You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Clover nodded and left. Junpei was about to follow her when he realized that Seven wasn't following suit. Hmm? Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well. He looked up at Junpei distractedly, then back down at the brown bottle he had cupped in his large hands. Is, is that a medicine bottle? I got curious about it. Here. In response, Seven tossed the bottle gently to Junpei. He caught it and twisted it around to read the label. Ethylene diamine tartrate? What the fuck? Yeah, that's right. CDT. What? 
Okay. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Okay. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. <laughs> Still, it looks like it's cleaned my brain up. But <laughs> <laughs> Junpei looked up from the bottle. You remember something? Yeah. Seven nodded slowly and spoke. Well, I remember a story about EDT. Happened about 50 years ago. <laughs> oh my, okay. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were making it to sell as an industrial strength cleaner, like I told you before. But a year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals called a hydrate. Yeah, I'm aware of this. I look, I took chemistry in school. In fact, I took a college level chemistry chemistry course in school for college credit. Uh, I didn't do great in it, right? I didn't do great. I wasn't very good at chemistry, but I passed. I got like a B and it was it was a low B. So I look, I, I know a little. It, granted, that was years ago, so let's see how much I remember, but... Once the crystals turn into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. As a hydrate, they were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere. Oh my god. Even nowhere near that first American factory. Oh, I hate this stupid... I hate this plot line. Everything's connected. Oh my god! Like the ice that doesn't melt, that just stays ice even in the desert, and then it happened everywhere. Like I hate this shit. It's so stupid to me. They've been making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just spread. It was like, man, how do you say? You mean like it was infected with a virus or something? Seven shook his head. No, not like that. It spread like wildfire. It showed up in labs that were completely isolated from the rest of the world. It even started happening to crystals that were completely sealed up. It doesn't seem like it could have been a result of this stuff coming in contact with other samples. And then... Well, I guess it was some sort of information. What? Oh my god. Like, the crystals were transmitting this information all across the world somehow. These crystals were talking to each other, dude, and they were like, Hey man, if we bond with this water, is what like... What is <sighs> How to make a new crystal. <laughs> Someone had to tell the stuff how to do it, right? This is so stupid. Tell the stuff how to do it. Really? Like he just whispered to the EDT in the tank. <laughs> hey, if you do this, you can take in water molecules. <laughs> Even you can take in water molecules, dude. They're going to use you as a cleaner. But you know what? If you do this one simple trick, you're going to grab some water molecules. Just grab those bad boys and hold on to them. And they got to throw you out. They got to throw you out. You can do whatever you want. You're free. Come on, man, that's just, I mean, who is this someone anyway? A uh, zero. He's the one doing this, clearly. Someone you can't see. <laughs> like God? <laughs> someone who exists all over the world. You mean, like, like a God? Or maybe the devil. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Damn it, it's the devil who's ruining our EDT crystals, man. It's the fucking devil. He's the one out here ruining everything. <laughs> He's the one telling ice don't melt anymore. He's the one <laughs> ruining our detergents. What an asshole, that devil. Seven grinned. As Jupe was trying to figure out what on earth he was going to say next, Clover's shrill voice pierced the room. Hey, what are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here. Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez. Seven looked at Junpei. Yeah. So, anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. With that cryptic remark, he turned and left the room. Junpei was left behind to ponder what he'd just heard. Information being transmitted invisibly. Could such a thing really happen? 
Well, thinking about that crap isn't going to help me right now. We need to figure out how the hell to get out of here first. He took a deep breath, tried to clear his mind, and followed after Seven. Okay, well now we have the, the heart and the, the chest. I mean, can we, can we like, ch chest? Maybe I need to combine them. Hold on, combine chest with arm? No, okay. Uh, I guess there's probably another key somewhere in here to open the other room, right? There any, there's nothing on. That drawer, the drawer is empty. Yeah, nothing there. We do have this liquid now as well. Something that looks like it could be a scale next to the operating table has something that looks like a lid on the front of it. John is just lying there. You know, he's just vibing. Don't be don't be weird to John. I'll put some blue liquid in there. Can't even open it, right? Yeah. What if we open it using No, we used all this. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Looks like it's probably a heater. There's nothing. What if the organ key opens both doors? Hold on. It opens both doors. Okay, you know, I just thought about that. And cool, it's unlocked. Oh god, I hate this. Um, let's see if... Huh, a piece of paper. What's this? Is this some kind of medical record? New material's been added to the file screen! Yo! Oh, that's the item screen, excuse me. I would like to look at my files, please. Uh, the medical record. Medical record found in the preparation room. It has records for the two mannequins. There's a male mannequin named John and a female named Lucy. The records show each mannequin's total weight and the weight of their individual parts. Oh my god. Oh my lord, I'm gonna have to actually get their weight correct. Oh no, not like this. Well, we'll deal with that when the time comes. <sighs> what the hell are you doing? Don't you want to get out of here? But I'm tired. Understandable, honestly. I'm tired too, dude. There are four different lights, each one a different color. White, red, blue, and purple. This thing react... Does this thing react to something and then the lights light up? I found a beaker! Congratulations, it's an empty beaker. Four different lights, yeah, yeah. Oh! Okay, okay. There's a ray of light going through the beaker. And it's hitting the thing on the right! Can we, can we use like, like a little liquid action here on this? Yeah! Hey, the blue light turned on. And I heard a noise. It sounded like something unlocking. Okay, well, let's go see what unlocked. The door unlocked? No, it's locked. It won't even budge. Do you think this is the exit? I mean, it has a, it has a key on it, the, the symbol. There's a symbol engraved on the keyhole, or over the keyhole. Hey, this is the Jupiter symbol. Hey, wasn't this Jupiter symbol engraved by the keyhole on the other door? Other door? The door at the end of the hallway with all these rooms, or with all those rooms, excuse me. You think maybe this door and that door use the same key? Maybe? What's this? A light switch? Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. It's locked, won't open. Yeah, I know, I tried to back up. I apologize. Oh, well, this is probably what unlocked, huh? Got a fake left leg. So now we need to make purple by combining. Well, let's get red first. The red light's on now. I think I heard another noise. I like how we just pour that right back in the bottle, no problem. Lock with a red plate on it. There's something inside. Fake right leg. And the last combination. I would like to use the red liquid. I mean, it doesn't really matter what order. Oh, fuck. With the blue liquid to make purple. I get it. You combine the red liquid and the blue liquid to make a purple one. Good job, Junpei. The 
purple light came on and I heard it unlock. I'm sure it's unlocked. The locker with the purple plate has gotta be unlocked. All right, let's see what happened. What if I had done this before getting the red and blue ones? <laughs> like, is there a way for me to unmix this? Or is it just game over? Oh, it just unmixes it. Yeah, it's just that easy. <laughs> Fake stomach. You know what, I should, I, look, I should search them for, for words. This is a really big nose. It's no nose. It's a stomach. Uh, oh, a stomach. The right arm of a medical mannequin. This is the left foot of the mannequin. Do you think I'm better? Uh, what? Do you think my legs are skinnier? Jesus Christ. Kid, calm down. The right foot of the medical mannequin. I guess it's a woman's foot, but damn, it doesn't look hot at all. Have you got a thing for feet, Seven? No, th that's crazy. You're sure acting kind of shady. Jesus Christ, get me out of here. Get me away from these two. They're fucking freaks, man. Uh, sink. The doctors and nurses probably wash their hands in here before an operation. Nothing suspicious here. True, true. So let's uh, get the fuck out. All right, we've got all of the body pieces. Assemble. Okay, so we've collected the six parts of the medical mannequin. So the ones we, so the ones we've got must be for Lucy, right? Yeah. Seems like it. Well, I say we give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. Agreed. All right, let's get started. Combine! <laughs> it's just that easy. Hey, nothing happened. It's odd. Maybe it's the wrong weight? Weight? Yeah, well, you know how there's a scale on the side of the bed? Maybe, maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we gonna do that? I think we're supposed to swap her body parts with John's. Oh my God. Oh, let's give it a shot. Operating instructions, the screen will display two medical mannequins. You can switch their body parts by selecting the part you want to swap out. Can I view my, oh my God. Okay, um. Fuck, I don't remember my target numbers. Swap arm. And leg? No, other leg. No, swap only legs. Fuck. I mean, surely we don't swap. Oh, we can swap stomachs. Well, that's a game changer. Um, you know, hit, hit me with a reset. Let's go back. Let's look at the file. No dice. I think if we knew the weight of each part, we could figure it out. Yeah, we have that in the file. That's. I keep going to the freaking item screen, dude. File, medical record. Okay, so... John is 51.3, Lucy's 53.2. 51.3, Oh my god, I need to like, I don't have my friggin' phone on me. The paper's coming back out. Paper's coming out. I don't have my phone. My phone's in the other room charging, because I'm a fool. And I did, I, I ideally I would like to just take a picture of this, but uh, that's unfortunately not plausible in the current moment, so. We're writing all this down. Live writing down. Lucy equals 53.2 kg. I'm American. I don't know the kilogram to... Is it... Ki one pound is... is No, no, no. One kilogram is 2.54 pounds. Is that right? I don't remember. There, there's a... There, I, I believe the conversion rate is 2.54. It's been a while. John is 51.3 kilograms. Okay. So, now we go chest equals 6.2, heart equals 2.3. Arm is 1.5. Stomach is 
I know this is riveting content for you all, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, left leg is 3.4. And right leg is 4.5. Whereas for Lucy, it is 6 for chest, 2 for heart, arm is 1. Stomach is five. Left leg is three. Right leg is four. Cool. I got all this info down. All right. You're gonna go where I can see you more readily. Whew. Wait, what is hint? Oh, that's that's the. Okay, okay. Cool. So let's give this another shot. So we're trying to get Lucy to be fifty-three point two. Oh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. So we can gain half a pound by switching her arm, in theory. Yes, perfect. So we can gain... So let's see here, can we switch hearts? Oh, we can, that's freaky, I don't like that one bit. This is real weird. Um. Okay, so she needs to gain 2.2 kilograms. In order to do that, we could do 1.1. Okay, so if we switch the arm and the right leg, that's one kilogram. That's one kilogram. If we switch the stomach and the left leg, it's two kilograms. And then if we switch the chest, boom. Literally just switch everything but the heart. <laughs> it's just that easy. Oh, goodbye, paper. Don't know if you heard that. That was me throwing the, the binder over to my shelf. Hey, Junpei, I just heard something. It came from John's operating table. We better check it out. Okay, what's up with John's operating table? I chose the longest way to rotate to get there. An old operating table. The medical mannequin is lying on it. Hey, Junpei, look at the scale. Okay. Huh? The lid on the scale. Hey, it opened! Oh, I get it! It must have opened because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. Boom! Something on the part that's sticking out. Yeah, it's the friggin' Jupiter key! Let's get out of here, dude! Hey! The symbol engraved on that key. Isn't it the Jupiter symbol? Then that, that means... We can get the fuck out of here, dude. Let's go. Easy operating room, baby. Through the prep room. Boom. Get me out of here. Hey, hold on. Junpei stopped, about to put the key into the doorknob. Oh, uh, what's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Oh my god. Junpei turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Oh, god damn it. Where the hell did she go? Ah, uh, okay, J just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Junpei left Seven at the door and headed back to the operating room. He found her, standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. <sighs> he didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, Junpei might have thought she was dead. What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? <laughs> it wasn't the best joke, but it was something. An attempt to lighten the mood. I liked it. You know what? I liked it. And Clover didn't laugh. She stood stock still and said nothing. Hey, Clover, can you hear me? Perhaps it was something he'd said, or perhaps it was something else. Suddenly, her mouth opened, and she whispered in a dry, dead voice. My brother might be dead. Okay, um... Uh, huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. Suddenly, suddenly the operating room felt very, 
very cold. What, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but she still didn't respond. <laughs> Silence grew heavier. Let's just get out of here. We've got the key. Let's use it. That cool with you? Yeah. Clover nodded, almost imperceptibly. Still, Junpei was glad to see she was at least somewhat responsive. Then it's time to go. He put his hand on her shoulder and guided her to the preparation room. As they arrived at the door, she suddenly stopped. I'm sorry. What was this? Why was she apologizing? Junpei wasn't sure what to make of her. Was she emotionally unstable because her brother had gone missing? I mean, that seems reasonable. I'm really sorry. Just forget everything I told you, okay? Don't worry about it. Really, I mean it. I'm gonna worry about it. Mostly because I know Snake is dead. So... Could anyone pretend not to hear something like that? But something told him this wasn't the time to press the issue. Junpei gave her the warmest, kindest smile he could manage. All right. Thank you. Her smile was weak. It was almost painful to watch. Damn, what the hell took you guys so long? Seven looked up as they walked into the room, clearly irritated. You playing doctor in there or something? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. Jealous? <laughs> Seven avoided answering the question. <laughs> Why didn't you invite me? I love playing doctor. <laughs> they stood in front of the door. Junpei took out the Jupiter key. All right, I'm going to open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, all right? <sighs> Fine, then. He slid the key into the keyhole and turned it. It felt un- uh, he felt it unlock. You found it, baby! Let's go! The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. <sighs> Beyond it lay a simple wooden ha- or wooden hallway, white hallway. Jesus, there was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. All right, let's get going. Hey, man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy, you know, get a little excited? <sighs> Not really. Junpei turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. Or wooden hallway, depends <sighs> on your interpretation. My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that her brother was probably dead, and she was likely to follow him. Like hell I can. Not after hearing something like that. You found it! The snake's dead! Or maybe, maybe, what if he isn't dead on this route? That'd be pretty, pretty wild. But anyway, this is where we're gonna end the episode. Please. Look, we don't... Look, I don't need to listen to the... Okay, look. Thanks for watching to the nice, nice foot patter ASMR in the background. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, take me to the title screen. <laughs> Why does it just loop? Why does it just loop, dude? Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you look down in the description, you will find a link to the Steam Store page. You can pick up the game for yourself if you want and uh, play through it. Do so. I recommend it. I really do. It's uh, it's really good. Really good game so far. And uh, you get two games for one. I don't know. Why am I trying to show this game? Because I like it. You know what? I like it. I want more people to buy more games. Buy games so that game devs can make more good games. It's the easiest like trade offer in the world. You buy my game. I make more game profit right like it's just that simple but anyway i really do appreciate you making it this far with me and uh, i hope you have a great rest of your day or your night and i will see you again next time goodbye